Hi, welcome to Buy the Fruits. I am your host, Jeremy Stone. I am with a fill-in co-host, and his name is Jeremy Anderson. And tonight, we have our first segment of um, this new this new thing we're doing here on Buy the Fruits, and it's called Testimony Tuesday. So we're going to have people on to talk about their testimonies, uh, how they came to Christ, um, or and or uh, supernatural experiences, things like that. But Christ needs to be incorporated with that. You know, I don't want to just hear how you were possessed by a demon and that's it you know what i mean we're gonna bring people hope here we're gonna try to lighten up the mood um on this show on by the fruits we usually expose the darkness every single time and uh i just thought it'd be nice to have this new segment in here to kind of lighten things up and bring glory to god uh not that we don't incorporate god and everything else we do because we do but um this would just be a nice thing to help other people edify them give them hope give them strength um and our testimony is probably the most important things in our lives and uh for today our first very first segment we got a mason hirschman today and he's going to tell his testimony to the world and uh have you told anybody else about this besides like at church or have you ever been to on other podcasts or anything like that i've never been on other podcasts but i've spoken um at other churches uh about it and other groups about it um, in front of groups and stuff like that, and individual. I've told a lot of individuals. Um, you know, we overcome the the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Um, and, and you know, we're supposed to build each other up in the faith and uh, stir one another up in the Lord. Um, you know, so I'm I'm always sharing my testimony of how the Lord saved me and you know transferred me from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of His beloved Son. And uh, I'll never stop sharing it until I take my last breath. So, Amen. That's yeah. beautiful, yeah. man. That's beautiful. Yeah. And of course, all three of us here have a testimony. Um, yep. Jeremy, you do want to uh, introduce yourself real quick? Uh, I mean, people probably know you by now. You've been on the show like 50 times. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> and then just tell everybody. <laughs> just do it. Yeah, no, nah, man. I, as always, I'm glad to be here. Uh, Anytime I can come on with you guys or have you guys on with me, I'm thrilled. You know, you guys are family, you and John. And I'm actually very excited about the, the testimony episodes. Um, I remember when we first started doing the Martyria time on the Remnant Report, which is just the Greek word for testimony that's used in the book of Revelation when it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And um, uh, I think BDK or either Art Destiny Lab, they, they were the first two that I had on. And we did testimony shows for a year. So it's always awesome to hear somebody's testimony and Amen. To praise and honor to the Lord. Mm-hmm. So. Amen. Hey, so I'm 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 excited, man. I'm very I'm looking forward to your testimony, Mason. So hardcore, bro. I've been this has been on my heart for a very long time. So it's a it's a blessing that you're the first dude on here. Uh, a yep. blessing for me at least. You know, I'm excited to hear your testimony. We've been talking. For a couple months now on Facebook, um, I know I don't know you personally, but I know you in a way. So yeah. for those who don't know you, can you give a little background about yourself? And then, you know what, just take the mic, bro. And uh, if we have to pause you in the middle of your testimony to ask some questions, we will. But besides sure. that, just it's all yours, bro. Absolutely. I'm, I'm so honored to be here um, and just all the ways the Lord has moved me in my life and here i am you know sharing with people that are around the country and um you know my goal is to honor the lord jesus christ um and i don't care if it reaches one person i don't care if it's just uh you guys you know um it doesn't matter to me all i want to do is you know honor my king um so yeah my name is mason hirschman uh i right now i live in tyler texas East Texas. Um, I have a wife and three children. I'm 24 years old. Um, 
I was born. I'll start with my birth. Uh, I always start with my birth. Uh, I was born in Dallas, Texas, basically. Uh, DFW is huge. <laughs> so there's a bunch of cities around it. So I just say Dallas. But uh, yeah, I was born four months early. I'm a triplet. So I've got a brother and a sister triplet. Uh, we were born at 24 weeks. So that's four months early. Um, that's dope. <laughs> You're a triplet. So we, that's awesome. Yes. And so we, we had a lot of complications when we were born. Obviously, we were triplets through, um, you know, in vitro fertilization. It, it probably, you know, brought some problems, but, you know, triplets on their own, you know, that can bring problems anyway. So, um, yeah, we, we all had problems uh, coming out of the womb. You know, I had a, a lung collapse and, um, you know, my retinas were detaching. Uh, the retina is a part of your eye that, you know, brings in the light. I think I'm not a scientist, but I, so I don't know, but, um, sounds right. So they, they had to like laser my retinas into place, um, to save my eyesight. You know, I was born at one pound, six ounces. Um, my sister was born at one pound, three ounces. My brother, my big bro, he was born at one pound, nine ounces. So. We were all under two pounds and we didn't have a very high chance of surviving. My brother, he's blind and autistic. Um, my sister, she like she had like holes in her intestines. Um, and this is important to my story. Um, it just testifies to God's faithfulness. And he he formed us and knitted us in our mother's wombs. Um, and he has a plan and purpose for us. So um we all made it. Praise God. Um, I had cardiac arrest at one. So that's, that's like my medical history. I always share that. I, I think, um, it glorifies God to share. Um, but other than that, you know, um, I grew up in a pretty normal home, normal American, um, middle-class home. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't too different than what you'd see on a cookie cutter TV show, you know, uh, going to church, you know, twice a week, going to the Bible studies, um, with my family, they, they, you know, went to church a lot. Um, but something happened early on in my life. I, first time I saw pornography was second grade. So I would have been about seven to nine years old. Ah, same here, dude. I, oh yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, real, real quick before you can, I don't mean to interrupt so early, but I just want to know. Uh, I'm assuming that your parents, both your parents, were Christian or no? Yes, professor Christians. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, That's good. So yes, uh, it's a tough thing to talk about. Um. They didn't know what was going on. Um, they didn't know the depth behind all that stuff. Um, you know, you can blame individuals, but I think that if the church was doing what it was doing, uh, what, what it should be doing, rather, then uh, maybe they would have been more aware. I don't know. Um, so, I mean, that continued on through elementary school pornography, you know, as you know, graphic porn. It wasn't just you know, pictures or, you know, suggestive themes, you know, I'm, I'm talking like graphic pornography, you know, from an early age, excuse me. Uh, yeah. The, the age you grew up in, dude, it wasn't no playboy magazines at that time. You're only 24, bro. Like, you know, yeah. so you, you yeah. have all that access, you have whatever. And I, and I know uh, from personal experience that porn messes you up, dude. It does. It, it takes a big toll on your life. And uh, luckily, God, you know, this isn't my testimony, but, you know, God delivered me from that like 10 years ago. But, uh, you know, yeah. I, I know what you're saying is all, is all I'm trying to say. So carry on. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, my car. Uh, but oh, you're good. Yeah. So so that carried on. Um, and praise God for your deliverance of that. He delivered me too. Um, and I'll get into that. 
So, yeah, that carried on through my elementary school years. Um, and, you know, I developed a uh, enjoyment of scary material, um, you know, from a young age, violent, violent uh, graphic video games. Um, you know, you name it. Uh, this was elementary school starting to get into this and I enjoyed it, but it was scarring me at the same time. You know, my innocence in a way was taken from me from that pornography experience in second grade. Um, you know, obviously it's a lot different than like um, a sexual molestation, something like actually physically happening to you. But my mind was altered, you know, at that time, you know, when I saw that. So, you know, moving into like middle school, you know, pretty normal kid. But uh, the, the problem was, is that pornography was distorting my mind um, to to have the desire for unspeakable things. And um, so. By that time, I, I, I was starting to get into anime. This is a huge part of my testimony here. Um, and, and that anime stuff, you know. If, if you take a look at it um, and the roots of it, and you, you don't even have to really look at the roots um, to see that it's hyper occultic, um, hyper sexual. Um, you know, they're literally doing incantations in the shows, you know, hyper sexual, you know, you name it, type of witchcraft they have it in there. Uh, maybe not like child sacrifice or anything, but. All of this stuff was stirring up an interest in the occult for me. Um, that worries me. I'm, I don't want to interrupt you at all, but I've got an yeah. adult son in his 20s that an artist, but he's also huge into anime. Right. And I've always been worried about that. Uh huh. I'd love to expound on it. Um, it's growing rapidly in popularity. Um, for me, I, I got sucked into it. Um, I wished I was in an anime, you know. This is where my mind was at. Um, I watched it for hours and hours a day. I, it, my every thought, you know, was... No, maybe not every thought, okay, but but uh, it's, it's what I focused on a lot. Um, I mean, I'm serious. I, I really did. And uh, the, the anime porn... It is something I fell heavily into. Um, and and this really took a toll on me spiritually because the anime porn is saturated with the occult as well. You know, sex magic, um, yep. sex rituals, succubus, incubus, you name it, uh, child stuff. Obviously, it's not real child stuff, you know, but um, it's drawn that way. And that's the way that they uh are taking and this, and it's it's much more graphic at the same time it's much more graphic yeah. than real life too yeah i know what you're talking about yeah because it's it's fantasized um but yeah so it's like the um, that drew my my attention to the occult even more um you know i watched a lot of tv shows like supernatural i don't know if you guys have heard of that uh you know watched it with my family they didn't Guilty. know it was wrong uh, but you know what? I mean, just to be honest with that, I mean, they think God is dead in that show. They don't proclaim yeah. the name of Jesus in that show. And it's like, it's hyper Gnostic. Oh, yes. Uh, like hyper neo Gnostic. And, and it just glorifies the darkness is all it does. And so this drew me further into my interest with all that stuff, along with the anime, which is just basically the same thing, but like uh, a little more dramatic, I would say. Um, and so I, I started getting to the point where the only type of pornography I was watching had succubuses in it. That became my fetish. And I did it all while professing Christ's name, the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, proclaiming to be his. Proclaiming that nothing was wrong, you know, I I didn't bat an eye at the fact. Oh yeah, I'm I'm good with God, you know, I'm good. I'm wealthy and in need of nothing. That was my posture, you know. I didn't know that scripture back then, but that was my posture. Um, and 
you know, a majority of my family, uh, unfortunately, maintains that same posture. I'm not saying that they got into any of that. Um, and and uh, a few of them have come around. Praise the Lord for that. Um, but it's it's just the American church. It's it's like we're in wealthy. We are wealthy and in need of nothing. Um, you know, but Jesus says to them in Laodicea, Laod Revelation 3, that I say you're poor, pitiful, blind, and naked. Um, and so it's this haughtiness that that was my posture. And, you know, I, I wanted to get into the Grim Wars and all that, you know, fancy stuff. And I never joined any covens or anything like that. I'm just trying to paint the picture for you guys that the interest was there. Um, I was obsessed with succubus stuff. You know, I going into high school, you know, we're in high school now in the story. I, I started getting into drugs, uh, you know, started off with marijuana, uh, started getting into cocaine and barbiturates like Xanax. Um, cocaine and Xanax became like kind of a favorite of mine. Uh, you know, I didn't really do many psychedelics until towards the end. Uh, and, you know, I had a, an encounter with, um, an entity, you know, because I was so obsessed with the succubus stuff, you know, I was looking up, how do I summon one of these, you know, and I didn't even do the, the, the thing, you know, um, but it was just my intention there that brought that in because I'd already made the agreements with them. I'd already made the covenants with them by my actions, you know, so moving on. Uh, drugs, you know, pretty heavy. Uh, I didn't get into needles or anything like that. Um, I, I was scared of them, to be honest. But um, it, it was getting pretty bad. And, you know, some of my other family members had been getting into that as well. Um, I, moving into how the Lord saved me, you know, I was reprobate. Uh, I was mocking him, you know, falling away from even wanting to have anything to do with him. Um, but I did all these things, professing his name, and then came a pivotal point where my parents, um, you know, my parents were, you know, pretty wealthy, and they said, enough is enough. I, I lived pretty quietly, to give you context. Uh, my twin sister, you know, she was more, a little bit more rambunctious. Uh, with everything uh you know she had gotten into some of that drug stuff as well um the lord has obviously delivered her from that um she's following the lord now uh with vigor and uh radiancy and seeking to um to to walk by the spirits and it's it's amazing to see that just want to put that out there not slandering my sister you know i'm, I'm just giving you guys some context um, uh, so my parents said enough is enough. This is where the pivotal point was, um, and the grace of our God to deliver us from apostasy, from blasphemy, you know, uh, from delusion, um, being a friend of the world. And so my parents they said enough is enough they shipped me off to another country they said we're going on vacation um i think jeremy uh just left yeah he'll probably call back in okay so they said we're going on vacation uh i said okay this was 11th grade i was probably 16 i said okay it's december why are we going on vacation they said well we just want to take you guys somewhere okay so this is my sister and i my sister, uh, you know, obviously my twin sister. So we, we went to the Dominican Republic. Um, if the listeners don't know, that is the same island as Haiti. That's the other side in the Caribbean. So we went down there, had a week vacation. And um, funnily enough, um, I started kind of confessing some things to my dad. Um, I think the Lord was preparing me. For what was coming uh my heart was starting to soften a little bit and that's all i can really 
<laughs> say about that. But then we took a drive up to the mountains. They said, we're going to go do some mission work. I said, okay, cool. Whatever that means. You know, I didn't care. Uh, they said, we got there, you know. It was this, uh, we were in the small town called Hardabacoa in the mountains of the Dominican Republic. And uh, so I'm, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles away from home in another land. And they said, you guys are staying here. We're leaving you behind. We're, you're going to stay at this school. You are going to change your ways. You're going to stop going the way you're going. And <laughs> our reactions were, I don't know, visceral is the right word. Uh, our, our reactions were crazy. You know, I spat on my parents' face. I cussed them out. And I remember distinctly <laughs> saying, I have this all figured out. I had my life figured out. I'm going to go join the army. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. What do you think you're doing? You know, spitting on them and all that. And, you know, they're crying. Um, I'm crying. My sister's freaking out. She runs away from the car. My dad has to go chase after her. And so to kind of make a long story short there, um, we got left in the Dominican Republic by our parents. But this was the start of the Lord breaking me down. Um, I was broken. I was undone. And I said, God, why are you? God, why are you doing this to me? You know. And. Uh, you know. By his grace, he took me to my knees, you know. Um, and. It was almost immediate. I, I was like. I have to change like something's not right with my life. And I didn't necessarily know all the intricate depths of it at the time, but I was like, I'm, I'm going the wrong way. You know, I knew that I knew I wasn't serving the Lord, you know, while I was watching all that horrific pornography, I was looking up, is this wrong? Does God say this is wrong? Because in deep down inside, I don't know if I was saved back then or not as a child. I, I don't know, but I had a conscience still and I knew it was wrong. So I think all along, the Holy Spirit was always there. Um, if he wasn't inside of me, he was always with me. He was always influencing in the right way. Yeah, influencing me. Exactly. Um, there was always a spiritual battle going on. Now I understand that. The enemy was trying to pull me in his direction to follow him. Because maybe he knew something I didn't, but it doesn't matter. Um, he was fighting for my soul. And uh, just like you were saying, Jeremy, um, about your testimony, I do believe that there's a spiritual war. And they are actually fighting in the spirit to, to for souls. Um, you know, I mean, uh, Satan and... Um, Michael were, were uh, fighting over the body of Moses. It says it in the book of Jude. Um, and so, you know, moving forward, I, I met a, a man named Jamie Walden down there, which, Jeremy, you, you've told me uh, you're familiar with Jamie Walden yeah. um, of Omega Dynamics. Yeah, I am too. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Small world. Praise the Lord. That's, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> that is so cool so Amen. um yeah it, he was basically uh he lived at the house across the street from me the point of this camp school wow. was to rehabilitate troubled teens um and it's expensive so this is uh, uh i guess the centrality of of it is it's basically rich kids around america that are stuck up and depraved OK. If that gives you guys some context to kind of my situation at the time. Um, 
And so as I was there, Jamie um, and some others, you know, were just pouring into me. Uh, I distinctively remember Jamie and another man. Um, distinctively those two. And uh, another woman, too, by the way, you know, a couple others were drastically different in a way that I could not understand than the other members. Um, but even apart from that, I had never seen someone emulate what it is to walk in the spirit in my entire life. Um, not even close to the manner that was shown to me through Jamie, to be honest. Um, this is no glory to Jamie. This is all glory to the Lord who sets men free. And by his grace, by his power, we have the ability by his blood to enter the throne of grace with confidence and good works are born out of us believing that he's a propitiation for our sins. And so walking in that, yielding to that, submitting yourself under his mighty hand, you give him space to move. That's what I saw that I'd never seen before in my entire life. And I said, I need to go that way. Wherever this guy's going, I am going that way. And I'm not looking back. That was my posture. I didn't say those exact words, but that was my posture. You know, I started eating up the word. Meanwhile, I still had a lot of demonic oppression. Um, you know, obviously, as I was making that decision to follow Christ, um, I was still kind of obsessed with like drawing pentagrams, you know, I didn't even know what magic sigils were um, at the time, but I pretended like I did and I just made stuff up because I was so obsessed with it. And it's sick. Um, it really is. It's sick. I thought, uh, it was brother, uh, I don't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to ask you real quickly. Like, do yeah. you know uh, where you might not know this? And yeah, I know it's a long time ago, so you might not know, but when was the first time that you've ever seen a pentagram or what got you into being so obsessed with the uh with it? If you don't mind me asking. Well, I can't tell you the first time I've seen a pentagram, but I can tell you Saw a um, lot of them on Supernatural. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure. That that was uh that was more in my high school years. Um the anime stuff started in eighth grade, but before that, um, I got into kind of like creepy pastas. If you guys know what that is, it's basically horror stories online that are like narrated. And right, I was like, absolutely obsessed with those. It talks a lot about cryptids and you know, it's scary stories. And, and there's a lot of most of it's demonic. Actually, all of it's demonic. Sorry. All of it's demonic. <laughs> um, Have you ever heard of the uh, Let's Read podcast? What is that? Let's read. Have you ever heard of uh, Let's Read podcast? I have not. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. That's a that's another like a I guess it would fall under creepy pasta. But this guy, yeah. Each episode is like four hours long, three hours long, whatever. Yeah. And he just goes through true stories that people submit, and there is a lot of demonic stuff. You just wish while you're hearing it, you could be like, dude, don't do it. <laughs> like you know what I mean, like. No, it's entertaining, man. But, you know, at, at a young age, man, um, I was just so obsessed with them. And and they are interesting. And, you know, some of it actually does have, um, you know, research behind it. Like, say you're talking about Wendigos or Rake, um, you know, Goat Man. You know, this stuff is real. It's out there. Um, the Bible talks about it. Um, so, you know, I get it. Um uh, you know, sometimes, you know, if you're doing it for like maybe, you know, looking into an account of something, uh, if the Lord leads you into it is the caveat, by the way, because if the Lord hasn't led you into it, you have no business looking into the dark side. Um, for one, you know, you can get stuff attached to you, Two, You have to be careful about your posture that you aren't hyper hungry for knowledge, 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 and forsake the knowledge of the Lord our God in place of those things. Um, which is, by the way, I'll, I'll get into that. 
as well. Um, because I kind of fell into that, you know, in my early walk as a Christian, um, it was just kind of overzealous of me. Um, you know, I wanted to expose the darkness and, but I, I got a little carried away, but I'll get into that later. Um, so back to it, uh, I guess the first time I saw a pentagram probably was in seventh grade or something. I played, uh, this like ritual game where you invite a spirit into your house essentially and you play with it and draw a circle around yourself with salt and you know if the candle blows out this and that and the other and it had to do with blood too i mean i mean this i didn't know what i was doing but opening doors left and right huh lit literally you know i'm not going to describe the ritual <laughs> there's no fruit in that but yeah i mean it's it's real bad so it's just sick the way the way I was being led um, by the enemy. But praise God for his restoration. I, I want to harp on that. Um, so he he delivered me out of the out of the dominion of darkness and transferred me to the kingdom of his beloved Son. Um, you know, it's in him we have adoption. We cry, "Abba, Father." Amen. You no. Know, um, I, I I didn't know it, but I was serving the father of lies. You know, I was a friend of the world and I was at enmity with God. But he brought me into his family. And he knew me before the foundations of the world were even made. Um, and by his grace, I'm set free. And who the sum sets free is free indeed. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's why I'm here. So. You know, Jamie kept pouring into me. I'm getting back into the timeline now. Um, he kept pouring into me, you know, speaking the truth over me in love. Um, at times there there was um, some correction, you know, and admonishment. Um, but I, I was just eating it up and I was eating up the word. I was reading the Bible as much as I possibly could. Um you know, for a couple of hours a day. I mean, I mean, we didn't have much to do there. We were under 24 hour watch. We couldn't have phones. Just letting you know, we couldn't have phones. And, um, you know, at first I was going crazy. I was detoxing and, um, you know, going crazy, all ticked off about everything and hated everyone. Uh, but at the same time, the Lord was breaking me down he was renewing my mind um you know through jamie and some of these other men and, and and women too um he used a lot of different people but um yeah he he changed my life and i i kept growing and growing and jamie left a couple months in um that's a whole nother story if you'd like to know about it I think uh, he's got a video on it somewhere, but he was wrongfully, um, you know, portrayed in a lot of ways. He, he spoke the truth and a lot of people didn't like it. He's talking about the Freemasons. He's talking about, you know, the context behind the scripture of the whole world lies in the evil one. You know, I mean, it's everywhere around us. You know, I'm not here to teach on that. Um, but you've got like the new world order and one world religion, mm -hmm. you know, just all that kind of stuff. You know, I won't get into it too heavily. Um, but all that kind of stuff he was talking about and everybody hated it. The counselors, the other teachers, they were sick of hearing about all that. They're like, why do you talk about all this so much? Wow. Um, there's okay. stuff that goes, you know, deeper behind it, you know, I'll, I'll let him speak on that. But, uh, you know, basically he, he left, he, he, he was told to leave by the, wow. the press of the company and by the way he was down there as a missionary um not being paid it was self-funded they said you've got to go so you know i won't get into that anymore but that devastated me obviously right um you know this brother that i'd met that i'd never experienced a, a, a love a brotherly love like this in my life a camaraderie like this you know we're called good soldiers in christ the lord is a warrior the lord is his name um you know, the Lord, his, his uh, faithfulness is our rear guard. You know, you got countless scriptures uh, that that uh, 
uh, testify to the Bible being a martial, a martial book and our God being a martial God, because uh, we're in a spiritual war. And um, I didn't know that before. But but at, at that time, when I was, you know, talking with Jamie and some of these other people, too, um, they exposed me to that. And they're like, dude, what you're doing is demonic. You're letting in demons. You have no idea what you're doing. And the the spiritual warfare was extremely heavy um, after I got converted. Um, crazy, crazy, unexplainable dreams. Um, voices, you know, telling me different things, uh, sometimes audibly. Uh, I remember one instance that said, um, you know, come, come, come to me. And it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Um, and I had a lot of shrouding presences around me all the time. Um, it was it was rough. So I'll fast forward, though, to for time's sake. Uh, so Jamie left. My sister left because she was there, too, by the way. I think I mentioned it briefly earlier. She left. Um, to be honest, she was kind of a hot mess the whole time. Uh, she she was in a different state. Um, she wasn't ready to to repent. Praise God, she has now. Um, like I said earlier. So I just left. I prayed about it. I said, I have to stay. You know, the Lord's doing something here. And so I'll fast forward. You know, I ended up graduating from that camp, and I came home, and this was in. 2017 um interestingly enough right around the time jeremy you said uh the lord turned things around for you so um i got home and i was kind of adjusting to my new life and i'll kind of this this doesn't take as as long to explain i don't think but uh um, I, I still struggled with pornography um, into my walk with the Lord. Um, I had a lot of growing to do. This was eight. No, this was probably seven years ago now. Um, struggled with porn a lot. Still uh, didn't really get into the, the anime porn stuff or the demon stuff. Um, I don't remember falling back into that. But it, at this time, it it was warfare, you know. So it, it was different, um, but, you know, I was stuck in that sin and I, I I was new in my identity in Christ. I really didn't know what that meant yet, but I knew that I had to figure it out because I knew it was the only thing that was important was my identity in Christ. Um, I just had a lot of maturing to do. So fast forwarding again. Um, I stayed in contact with Jamie a little bit. Um, he came out with his book, I think a year after he got back from the Dominican. Um, so the Lord was still using him. Um, a lot of the other relationships kind of fell away pretty quickly, sadly, uh, from the other teachers there. But um, yeah, I, I, I came back to Texas, um, lived with my family, and uh, eventually met my wife and um, she's basically my age. She's like three months older than me. We got married at 19 years old, uh, had a little bit of a rough dating life and the Lord was faithful to be gracious to us and uh, rebuke us in some areas and restore us. And uh, we got married. Yeah. In 2019. And, uh, We've been married for almost five years now. Um, we have three kids. We have uh, twins and toddler, all boys. We love them to death. And, um, you know, the testimony doesn't stop there because um, the Lord has done so much radical change in my life since I became a follower of the Lord. To Let's hear it, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, from the domain of darkness to the tr kingdom of his beloved son, where I can come to the throne of grace with confidence, because it's not about how good I can do it. 
that supposes that we are good in the first place. But the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. And the translation of that, sorry, ladies, it's period garments, menstrual garments that they would throw out. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. And that's the rag it's talking about. That's how bad it is. That is how um, unholy our flesh is. Um, but praise God, it's not up to that. It's up to us believing that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. And by his grace and strength, um, we can abide in the true vine. Um, and then we can bear good fruit because apart from him, we can do nothing. So he was just showing me all this. Renewing, um, not renewing, I'm sorry. He was building up my identity in Christ. Um, but I, uh, you know, the first couple of years in marriage, I didn't know what it was to be a leader. I, I was very cowardly. Um, it's all I knew. It's it's what I grew up. Um, it's what I grew up in. And and um, just my my wife, you know, she grew up in a household that her mom was, uh, you know, really controlling the and the leader of the home. And so those two things, you know. Spirit of Jezebel needs a spirit that Ahaz, okay? And that's what was going on. And I'm not saying, you know, there was a spirit inside of us, but it's uh, the traits that we were portraying. And um, so the Lord has, um, in in love, rebuked and disciplined and um, built us up uh, in the truth um, through brothers, through sisters, through his word. And a lot of that has changed in our marriage. Um, by the grace of God, through his word, by, by the blood of his son. And I say that a lot because that is that is the only good I have in me, is Christ Jesus. So um, a lot has changed in our marriage, and we've given a lot of things over to him. You know, um, we are free to walk with each other and know that we're going to fail each other. Um, but forgiving because we've been forgiven and she submits to me and I, I submit to her out of reverence for Christ, like it says, and I think Ephesians, but she also understands the headship that God has ordained. And so do I, and I'm under him and she's under me, but she's under him too. And so we're submitting to each other out of reverence for Christ in his order that he has established as a picture for Christ in the church. Like I think again in Ephesians it says. Um, and I think five. And so that's what he's been doing in our lives. Is just. Building up our identity in Christ. And the more. Knowledge I get my God. The more I understand how helpless I am without him. The higher I go in knowing the Lord, the lower I bow. I must decrease. I must decrease that he may increase. Like, you know, John the Baptist. Um, and so that's been my testimony is just the Lord constantly renewing my mind. When my mind is, is double-minded, he shows me. He has grace and he restores me. You know, if I fail, I have an advocate. If I sin, I have an advocate. Um, you know, that's no Says excuse that, and that's no, what's that? I, I was just saying, you know, as we have received mercy, faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, it's Second Corinthians 4. The whole chapter is really just awesome and uh, explanation of a lot of what you have talked about that you've gone through yeah. and experienced. 
Yeah. Yeah, God God is faithful. Um you know, to renew our minds and it's it's amazing to hear your testimony, brother, you know, all the stuff you've been through and um you know, we 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 can't consider it strange when we go through fiery trials. Um it's for our perseverance and um the testing of our faith, but we also know that we we can't compare them to the glory that's yet to be revealed at Christ's coming. You know, it's it's always an encouragement to me um, when I'm going through a, a troubling time. You know, I've been through some troubling times. Um, my twins were in the NICU. Uh, and just seeing the Lord miraculously provide uh, financially and, and supernaturally for our strength, too, um, it's just a, it's just amazing. I have countless things I could go back on and 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 say, yeah, he provided like 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 my twins. Uh, birth, just as as a quick little testimony, um, we 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 don't have a lot of money, and um, we had to have the birth in the hospital. We wanted it to be in a birth center. We couldn't because they were early, so we had to go into a OR, an operating room. And, um, she gave birth and there was a little bit of complications, uh, but overall they were good, but they, they just had some issues. They had to go in the NICU. They were a little smaller, you know, four pounds, basically each. Um, yeah, it's tough. And so scary. I was a small baby. Huh? Oh, I was just saying, yeah, that's, that's always, especially as a parent, that's tough and scary. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It is. I've had two in the NICU. It's just not. Uh... Yeah, it, it sucked. But uh, to conclude, you know, what I was saying, so I don't forget. Uh, so they were in the NICU, right? We couldn't do it in the birthing center, which is like more of a natural kind of thing. Um, but this all worked out to the glory of God. So the bill for the birth was $2,000 if you're paying cash, right? Keep in mind, we, at the time, we, we barely had anything to pay our bills at all. Um, you know, really, it, it was rough. We didn't have anything. So, um, I'm not playing the pity part it's to the glory of God. So what happened was the bill was $2,000, right? Two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. I'm sorry, that's that's what the number was. Um, well, the funny thing was, is since we didn't have the babies in the birthing center, we got seven hundred fifty dollars back from the midwife. Okay, that's amazing, right? But we still have the two thousand dollars to pay, right? That same day, an old friend of mine literally sent me two thousand dollars. Because he heard that we had had twins and he wanted to help us out. He didn't know they were in the NICU. He didn't know about the bill or anything. He sent us two grand, you know, that day. You know, a Zell, I think it was. So that bill was paid to the penny by the Lord himself, through his people, and by his sovereignty. Um, you know, I say all that just to say, like, even through the trials, the grinding and, and the struggles of life that, that we have in, in the spiritual warfare and everything, there is order in it, and it is our God. Um, he isn't order out of chaos. He is order in the chaos. He is order in the midst of the chaos. Because, um, you know, he's absolutely sovereign over all things. And so while we are struggling with things you know no matter what it is um you know we have a living hope and a sovereign god so um man that's been my testimony uh just walking by faith not by sight um through many things and um the lord remains faithful even when i'm not and you know by his hand and by his power I will be guarded to my inheritance and I will continue to submit to him under his mighty hand. Uh, 
you know, until I draw my last breath in these last days, whether I see him return or he calls me home, um, here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. So that that's my testimony. My wife is a radiant warrior for the kingdom of God. She is finding every day her identity in the Lord Jesus. And we are raising our children to have the same posture. Um, so we praise God for his grace, um, for his majesty. We lift his name up um, through the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and we, we thank you guys uh, for giving me this opportunity to make known the deeds of the Lord. I shall not die, but live and declare the wondrous deeds of the Lord. I don't think it says wondrous, but they're wondrous. Um, so praise Absolutely. God. Paul says, um, and you know, during the the very first days of the church, you know, the first years, the first century, the time of Acts, they were being killed constantly, yeah. and Paul calls that a light affliction, a light affliction. Right. He says, for our light affliction, which is for but just a moment, worketh for yeah. us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know, he says, all yeah. things, good or bad, are for our sakes, that the abundance of grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, rebound to the glory of God. And you know, mm -hmm. everything we go through, good or bad, there are many scriptures that say that the very same thing, you know, all things work together for good right. for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. But there are so many other scriptures that say the very same thing other ways. Yeah. No. I got to ask you, because uh, I'm just generally curious, um, when your parents, uh, two questions, I guess. When sure. your parents left you in the Dominican Republic, um, one, how old are you? And two, who did you live with? Like, how, how was that without them? That must have been, I couldn't imagine being like without my parents at a certain age. Yeah. You know what I mean? That'd be pretty wild. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked me that, man. Um, great question. How old was I? I was probably 17. Um, yep, I was 17 because that August I turned 18 and went for a home visit for a week. So, yeah, how was it living without them? Um, it, I was shocked for probably the first month. For the first week, you know, I was um, obviously really detoxing heavily. Yep people eyes were dead you know people said my eyes were spiritually dead and just dull you know like i had no life in me at all <laughs> they, um that spoke to the um the like the state that my soul was in um i was like I man I'm gone. you know i'm yeah. here in this country i'm literally on the back porch staring at the mountains over this third world country looking city. Beautiful place, by the way. And I don't know what I'm going to do. At first, I was like, I just got to ride this out and figure out how to get out of here, you know? <laughs> and well, um, was it, was it like, um, how would I, I guess, like a boarding school or something? Like, did you have like a dorm yeah. room type of thing? Yes, exactly. It was a boarding school. Um, Christian based boarding school. School, funnily enough to you know kick Jamie out for preaching the word too much and talking about Jesus too much and too boldly or whatever but um <laughs> so yeah Christian boarding school yeah um 17 years old had no idea what was going on uh didn't know what my future held didn't know how long I was gonna be there because some of the people were there for two years I was there for 10 months um Yep, 10 months. My sister left at, I think, month three or four. 
she went back. She did everything she could to, you know, kind of manipulate to get to get out. Get of out of there. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Which well, I, I just find it was crazy. I bet, man. Like I just find it. Um. Uh, I don't know the what the the right word to use here, but um, I just find it peculiar that all that worked out in the way that it did. You know, you could see that God was in your life and working in your life because it's hard of as hard as that must have been, bro. How many mm-hmm. people can say, "Yeah, my parents dropped me off in the Dominican Republic, and then I met Jamie Walden." Weldon, right. you know what I mean? And and if if a lot of people listening to the show know who he is. And I find that incredible because okay. I'm sure that he was like, he's got to have been one of the biggest impacts in your life spiritually to lead you to where you needed yeah. to be spiritually. Absolutely. And and to speak on that, man, it's so insane. Um, I was there his last three months. He had been there for two years. His last three months, I was there and wow. I couldn't drive it. But when I would hear him speak, I just couldn't deny what he was saying. Um, you know, it's just the Holy Spirit, you know, leading me to the revelation of Jesus for who he truly is. Um, you know, a war- the warrior king, you know, this holy God, but, you know, also uh, full of grace. You know, um, at the same time, you know, his the foundations of his throne are righteousness and justice, but... Uh, uh, steadfast love, you know, loving kindness go before him. I might have mixed up the words a little bit, but it's just like this this dual nature that is all the same at the same time. Um, and so I don't know, I just I couldn't deny it. Um, just this radical re- revelation of who Jesus actually is. And um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the other people you know, said the stuff he was saying was crazy. Um, you know, you're crazy for believing him. Or are you just going to believe everything Jamie says? And I was like, well, he's saying all this and I'm testing it with what I'm reading and it matches up. And I've never heard anyone else speak on these kind of things. No one else talks about this stuff. And right. Uh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. He, he is one of the biggest impacts in my spiritual walk. And he um, doesn't, he doesn't, uh, like, yeah, he preaches, preaches the gospel, obviously. But I mean, like, he's one of those guys that like you were saying he was talking about the Freemasons and all that stuff. Like, he's into the meat of the word of God, too. So I'm sure as, because you told me, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you grew up in church or at least went to church uh, for a bit when you were young. Yeah. Um, and the things that Jamie talks about along with many other people we can name you know jeremy and i can name probably 50 different people that talk about things that are never taught in church but the things that jamie was saying at that place while you were there while you happened to be there um yeah must have been really feeding your soul like it must have been it it must have been something you needed man It, it, it were you into like um were you into conspiracies or anything like that before you heard Jamie talking about like the Freemasons and all that or no? No, I don't think I was, man. I didn't know about the reality of all that stuff. All I knew that, um, demons existed, angels existed. Um, I did not know about the fallen angels. Um, but I was, I was interested in, in knowing about, um, the dark powers and I was going that route, you know. Um, but no, not really conspiratorial or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, the, the lens Jamie always would speak, and he's never changed his message ever since I've known him. He always says the same thing. Uh, it's just, you know, he speaks on the reality in which we live. And that is that we live in a world where Satan, Hasatan, is the ruler of this present age. And Amen. we don't against flesh and blood but princes uh sorry powers rulers authorities dominions and spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places um and so he would just basically how do you prove that well look around there's a freemason lodge in every town 
Look at what Rihanna's saying. She worships the devil. Look at what Cardi B is saying. She works with the devil. Katy Perry, Justin Bieber, they all have the same tattoos. They all yep. do the same hand signals. They're all part of the same groups. Look at all these billionaires. Look at what they're a part of. This and that and the other. I could fire host about it. But yeah, you know, it's, it's it's our occult world. Like we yeah. live in a world full of the and run by the occult. Exactly. Yeah. And so that that's what he would preach on is like, look, Jesus said the whole world lies in the evil one. I'm going to show you the bad. So you run towards the good because if 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 all this is true, what Jesus said, then I mean, you know, that that's pretty weighty. You know, if the whole world lies in the evil one, that's a that's a big deal. If the prince and the power of the I mean, that's a big deal, man. And so, I mean, that caused me to just run towards Jesus. I mean, other people uh, mocked and scoffed, but, you know, it's it's because the love of the truth wasn't in them, unfortunately. Yeah, to me, that's one of the ways that, um, well, I can't judge anybody else's heart, but I <laughs> do know that for me, one of the things that happened because my entire personality, mind, everything changed when yeah. you know I I surrendered my life to Christ. And one of the things that happened almost immediately mm -hmm. were the Holy Spirit started showing me things in the world, you know, conspiratorial well, you know, things that that the world would call conspiracies or conspiracy theories that right. are real conspiracies. And, yeah. you know, without even looking for them, I, I was constantly seeing them. And, yeah. you know, that one good example is like 9-11. Um, I was an avid supporter of George W. Bush um, when both times he was in office. And I got in so many arguments with a friend of mine who was in the military who had firsthand knowledge of what happened on September 11, 2001. And I... Um, argued with him over and over and you know, just said he was lying this was before i had come to christ but when i finally came to the only source of ultimate truth because truth is not relevant if, if you can't have your truth and me have my truth the way the world says you know, nowadays yeah. everybody has their own version of truth but that doesn't <laughs> change anything you know, there's only the truth and the lie in you know mm -hmm. every instance and whenever i came to the the knowledge of truth which is jesus christ and the word of god amen you know, my eyes were opened to the darkness in this world. You know, I was able to see things as evil that I used to take for granted. Like, you know, talking about Supernatural, it was my favorite show. You know, I watched yeah. every episode from the first season when it first started. And yeah, a lot of seasons on that one. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't until you know, I came to Christ that I was able to see the wickedness of these things. The, right. The, like you said, the whole world lies in the evil one. And, and that's what it says in, in John. And Jesus said that um, Satan is the god of this world. And, right. Paul says that the, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And that's why without Christ, you can't see these things. You know, you may be able to recognize some truth. You have 
um, so-called truthers that aren't Christians that are yeah. heavy into the new age, but they, if they don't have the knowledge of the truth that is Jesus Christ and the word of God, then it makes no difference what else they can see because they're blind mm -hmm. to the only source of truth that matters. And that's the truth that's going to save your eternal soul. I mean, yeah. That's a great point. And um, for me, at least, really rare to hear uh, because I think that um, even Christians a lot of the times get, get caught up in the conspiratorial uh, realm, I guess you could say. And they are always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, which is Jesus Christ, as you'd said. Um, it's easy to, to get slipped up in, in like, you know, kind of a Gnosticism. Um, you know, that's what Gnosis means is knowledge. Um, yeah, it's Gnosticism. basically the love of knowledge. Hidden knowledge. Yep. Yeah. And Gnosticism is so much more yep. rampant in the uh, Christian church than people even realize. And that's, that is such an important yep. point, bro. Such an important point. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not trying to step any, on any toes here, but like, I mean, Jeremy Anderson knows, like, when you get into, like, Calvinism and the historicity of doctrines in which they preach, it mm -hmm. leads back to Gnosticism. There is so okay. much as New Age, this New Age movement um, has also, and theosophy, all that stuff has infiltrated the church. And that's why it's so important to know your word know the history of the doc doctrine that you believe in and uh, be discerning about all this stuff because it's not as easy going as you think. You can't just read something and be like, oh, this is what it means. You know, you have to have right. the context. You have to have uh, solidifying facts uh, behind that because if not, then somebody's going to come along, say something that seems to make sense to you, and boom, now you believe in a Gnostic doctrine and you don't even know that it's Gnostic. True. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Great. That's a good point, man. Um, yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that one, brother. Um, I did not know that about Calvinism. Um, but it's interesting that you say that theosophy has infiltrated the church. Uh, I'm not super well versed on it, but, uh, you know, theosophy itself, like I think it's Helena Blonskovy or something that started that. And now, yeah, but, and Alice Bailey, but. I'll oh, teach okay. you later. <laughs> no, go on. Well, I was just going to say the, the thing that, that came to mind when he said that is, you know, I grew up believing that angels could not sin. Um, Man, I, I can't really even tell you what I believed when I grew up. I, I believed a lot of crazy stuff that, I, you know, I don't remember a lot of what I actually believed but i mean i wasn't being taught the truth man i mean i didn't know we were in a spiritual war and man it's just you talk about hive mind you know uh, i don't know if you guys heard of that i mean i know the freemasons yeah kind of talk about it and it's kind of a symbology that just um i was a product of the hive mind programming which is something I'm glad I remembered, praise the Lord. Um, you know, I wasn't, I'm not talking about that I was an SRA victim. I am absolutely not saying that. I want to make that clear. I'm saying that the things I was watching, doing, saying, every action, the things I wore, everything, fell in line with the rest of the kids down there at that program everything the drugs i was doing the anime the occultism um the memes everything was the same i was in a house with kids across the country one of them was from europe but he got adopted over here for a few years so he lived here for a few years but across the country you know i didn't know who each other were you know, it's totally separate lives. One of them was actually from my state, interestingly enough. That's kind of cool. 
But um, the point being is we we were a hive mind. We were a hive. We were we were um, slaves to to the darkness, and that's the way the powers of darkness have created it to be in my generation. And each one, each generation is getting worse. Coming, yeah. uh, d- drawing near the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, before that, you know, obviously the Antichrist. But um, the hive mind is getting worse. How else will the falling away occur? The great apostasy occur. They're doing it's by this. Design. On- it's by design. design. The culture is permeated with it. Um, you know, you can't. Yeah. We don't own a TV. Um, you know, it, because you can't. Used to, you had to pay for cable TV, and even if you had cable TV, you had to pay for like the channels like HBO, Cinemax. Yeah. Yeah. But now, I mean, it's on network TV that you don't even pay for, like the shows we were talking about, Supernatural, all these shows that that come on um, the network channels i don't even know what the initials are anymore because they've changed so many times over the course of my life you know wbcw um (laughs) they they just keep changing but it's the same you know uh media corporation that owns all of it the screen actors guild literally i mean if you want to know why the programming is the same on every channel no matter what you're watching whether it be news or television i mean literally the screen actors guild owns well not owns but every regardless of whether they are a weatherman or a major hollywood actor they have signed a contract with the Screen Actors Guild. In other words, they are actors. Um, you know, I, yeah. I've had videos that I've made from 50 different news outlets showing you know, the, the news from the t- same time slot. And they all literally say the same thing. It's just different people. Yep, I, there's that I, script. It is. It, it, it's acting. And, and how many in our generation, dude? How I mean, I'm 30. You're 24. Jeremy, yeah. you obviously were born before us, but like we all grew up watching certain cartoons or certain TV channels, whatever that we thought were completely innocent and didn't understand until oh yeah we got older, and then you're like, wow, I cannot well, believe they put that in there. Dude, I, I grew up watching yeah. He-Man, Masters of the Universe, the Heck most yeah. satanic cartoon that there it is. is, dude. <laughs> it is. And, uh, you know, that was, I mean, I, I had He-Man everything. That's who I wanted to be in. And I'm talking from five years old up until about 10, you know, and it's just, I guess, made a comeback here in the recent years on like Netflix. But back then, it was on early morning cartoons, Saturday morning cartoons. But yeah, yeah, and then eventually Cartoon Network. You know, like how many of us stayed up late to watch the adult shows on Cartoon Network? <laughs> I mean, I know I have. Maybe that's just my generation, but it's it's one of those things where. We're all indoctrinated with so much stuff, and exactly. uh, it's out of our control. And so, to a degree, um, to a degree, I feel like we're not all to blame for everything that we think or do or have thought. I think that we have been attacked in a way. Um, but then again, when you get older, like you are held accountable for anything that you do, no matter what you thought, no matter whether you're deceived or not. But that's the thing is like. We live in a world full of deception and these things are influencing our minds and our thoughts and our actions and our heart. And uh, because of that, it's still the same principle. We need to be saved because it's a sin no matter what. Absolutely. Um, Before we come to Christ, first of all, 
God does not hold us accountable for things we don't know. But when we come to Christ, the things that have indoctrinated us from you know, television shows, whatever, we are able to be set free from them, even if it doesn't happen all at once. Amen. But sometimes it does happen all at once. Um, but if we make a conscious decision to continue putting that stuff in our minds after we've come to Christ, I mean, the Bible's clear. Um, there's, <laughs> there's only enmity between God and the world. There's no fellowship between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. So if we continue fellowshipping with the kingdom of darkness, then the things that the doors that we open in our lives, the things that happen to us, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. And I'm not saying it's going to take your salvation away, but it's definitely not going to strengthen your relationship with Christ. And it very well could. It very well could take your salvation away. Uh, eventually, you yeah. Feed it, yeah, if you yeah. feed into it yeah. for long enough. Yeah, I yeah, meant like, get so you know, deceived just, where... Sorry, go ahead. No, you're good, man. You're good. I was just saying, like, I, when I said it's not going to take your salvation away, I meant, like, committing a sin, you know, watching a right. show. But if you fall into it, if you purposely go into a life of sin, then that's a different story. And mm -hmm. only God knows how long he will allow, you know, give mercy and grace before he Close the plug. either <laughs> yeah, takes, he, takes he us might out take of this world or, you yeah. know, to save your, to save your yeah, soul. That's what I was going to say. Exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> Or, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe an individual can come to the point where they absolutely reject that Jesus is God. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's, I it's, it's all in the scriptures. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, God eventually turns us over to a reprobate mind. I mean, our, yeah. our conscience is seared with a, yeah. like with a hot iron. Yeah, and music is huge with that. Um I'm glad we're kind of on this topic too. Um, forgot to talk about it, um, but you know, I believe God is sovereign in the in the way He moves us in our conversations. Um, <laughs> you know, I was heavily into uh, death metal and deathcore and a Me bunch too, of bro. satanic metal. Um, yeah, yeah, Jeremy too, still but... is. Ah, hey, yeah. I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. Metal, guys. Right? <laughs> it's Christian death metal. All right. <laughs> I I All still right. listen to some of it. Um, you know, like becoming the archetype and like, um, dude. I for, I will show you. It, it. I think we already had this conversation a little bit, but yeah, dude. I can name. 50 60 bands bro that are christian like like literally literally christian. Yeah. i'm not talking about like some kanye and, west christian bull oh yeah. exactly I and i i was just giving you a hard time as you know we <laughs> joke all the time because jeremy likes the the christian um metalcore and i i'm a christian hip-hop fan and i'm yeah. not talking about kanye west or justin bieber or yeah um, <laughs> I can't think of the other guy's name who's supposed to be Christian. Maybe Lecrae. <laughs> Lecrae, that's his name. No, I, yeah, I'm talking ASAP Preach, um, you know, Brian Trejo, um, you know, people who have built ministries through their music. And, yeah. You know, I don't <laughs> – we have different – um taste in music but i i don't as long as the the intention is pure and the message is pure then that's yeah. what matters well you know by their fruits you shall know them. and that's Absolutely. not just, that's what the podcast is called i mean um there there's some really uh great uh, metal bands that I've listened to that are Christian, uh, like 
becoming the archetype. Um, unfortunately, I think those guys have fallen away. Many uh, of them, bro. Many, many of them do, uh, especially in the music industry scene. And, you know, it doesn't have to be metal. Um, but yeah, uh, we have to remember that every metal, but that they're human just like us. I, I've watched yeah. um, my favorite artist uh, struggle off and on for years. And um, he, the, the one thing I'll say is he's been very transparent about it. Like, yeah, when he, you know, he'll come on YouTube. He's got over a hundred thousand subscribers. He'll come on YouTube, and if he is struggling, you know, he'll let people know what sins he's struggling with and ask for prayer, which is very rare. I mean, you don't, yeah. You don't see that in church, but much less <laughs> in, in the music industry. But yeah, and so I mean, they're human, just like we're human. And oh, like yeah. I know a, a lot of people completely turn their back on and and just believe with all their heart that Ravi Zacharias is in hell, and. I still say he's the greatest apologist of our time. And so um, only God knows where he's at, you know, where, where his yeah. heart was at when he died. He committed sins. But how many of us have sins that people don't know about only yep. because, you know, we're not well known. We're not on TV all the time. And so, yeah. I mean, good point. We are so quick to judge. Christians are the worst. Um, they really are. Yeah. And I They're try really to remember weird. that. I just know the grace that I was given by God. Um, I mean, the things that I've done in my life, I, I am the last person to deserve to sitting here with you guys discussing uh, the spiritual matters yeah and for the lord to allow me to do that and have done that even i've, I've had good and bad ups and downs i've had times where i've had to go on uh video and apologize for something I was teaching that was wrong. You know, yeah. Once I realized it was wrong. Um, it, I tried to remain humble. Jeremy knows more than pretty much anybody about me. And I, I've made mistakes. But I will say this, that even in my mistakes, my intentions were always pure. Um, I never intentionally tried to do something wrong to somebody or harm somebody. Um, right. It's mainly because I, I don't know. I, I just, I know how much grace God gave me. And I try to do the same thing. It hasn't always been that way. It's been a process of, of learning and you know, God chastening me. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, God chastening you is, is worse than any person. But it's just, we should, we should all always remember to remain humble. Especially yeah, I mean, the leadership positions, because we are going to be held to a higher standard when we stand yeah. in front of the judge. Right. Yeah. And uh, I know, I know, we only have a couple of minutes left. So, uh, Mason, I want you to finish your thought, and I want you to uh, say whatever you feel like, no matter how long it takes. You know, whatever you need to say before we get off of here, but. Yeah. The thing that Jeremy's talking about right now is one of those things why it's so important to live every single day 
like it's your last. And I don't mean like that in the worldly way. I mean, it all depends on where you stand at the time you stop breathing, in my opinion. Absolutely. Like, we, we, we all fall, fall back a bit. You know, we all fall into something. Uh, maybe it's a new string, uh, sin you never struggled with. You know, maybe it's something else that sucked you in. You know what I mean? But as long as you're still breathing, as the early church taught, and I believe as the Bible teaches, as long as you're breathing, man, you have a chance to repent. And I mean true repentance. I don't just mean saying you're sorry. You know what I mean? But yeah. It, it comes down to the fact that, like, every day is, I mean, you, tomorrow's never promised, dude. I could die tonight. And if I'm in a, some sort of willful, willful sin that my conscience is destroying me about, and I die in that sin, whose fault is that? It's not God's. Because the simple choice is to not do it. Absolutely. And, you know, if, if that happens, then only God knows um, what's going to happen after right. that. And it's I a mean, scary place to be in. I mean, it's it a scary definite, place to be. I mean, that is definitely a, a Hebrews 10 um, example. It, right. It's yeah. A, a, a and very, think about very fearful thing to in the hands of an angry god yeah and think about like yeah. hebrews 6 4 dude like you it, okay so dispensationalists i don't mean to go on to some theological ta uh, tangent here but a lot of the, uh, dispensationalists will think that oh well hebrews is for the book uh it, is for the jews no it's not dude at the beginning of hebrews 6 in general or well, and hebrews 5 like it talks about paul is calling these people his brothers and the only time he ever does that is to those who are believers okay and the fact is that he states emphatically that you once por uh, partook with the Holy Spirit, dude. You can't partake with the Holy Spirit on a on a whim, dude, like or uh, just some sort of random experience. No, dude. You, when you partake with the Holy Spirit, that means you must be born again. Absolutely. You must Absolutely. be born again. And he yeah. talks about how people fall away, and basically. I'm not talking about, in my opinion, it's to the point where they're back into unbelief or they put themselves back into the righteousness of the law. Right? So either one of those. One, you're trampling over the um, over the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us if you're putting yourself back under the law, like living as if the the law is the only thing that makes you righteous instead of Christ, right? And then you have the other part where it's like, well, these people literally partook with the Holy Spirit, they're born again, and they turn their backs on God. And that must mean, in my opinion, that they went back into unbelief. And I'm when I talk about belief, I'm not talking about like, oh, I believe the sky is blue. Like it's just this general sense of belief in that. I'm talking about the the Greek word for belief where it talks about action. You know, it's it's more about action and the way that you're living and um it's not just what comes out of your mouth that that proves what you believe like christ says yeah. if you and, love me you will obey my commandments like exactly. okay, how many people say they love jesus christ and don't obey his commandments at all but they're convinced 100 percent they love jesus and the more the thing that makes it more true about what you're saying is it doesn't even say believe it says after they've known yes, the love no. of the truth right they experience so, that firsthand and they know. if yeah, they shall they, fall they, away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they have crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Right. Even if you can, you know, you know, even if you don't lose your salvation, I, I can't imagine standing before Jesus after counting the blood of the covenant as a common thing and putting him to an open shame. Yeah. That it would, it would be horrible. Yeah. Terrible, man. But anyways, um, you know, Mason, sorry to go on that tangent. I'd like and love for you to finish um, any thought that you might have before we get off of here. Um, anything that you might want to say, the floor is yours, bro. Yeah. Yeah, those those are some uh intense scriptures and it just kind of speaks to the fact that our God is holy. 
um, you know, he has a standard. And of course, like if we sin, you know, in our flesh, you know, we we have an advocate. Uh, but, you know, I I believe that uh, people can fall into unbelief and that's a different thing. Um, you know, Jesus said there will be many that come unto me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this and that in your name? And we'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. And so I think right. it's like an individual posture of someone's heart before a holy God. And each one will be tested impartially. So it's very, very difficult um, to, to generalize it. Um, and when people say like, oh, God knows my heart. I'm like, mm, yeah, Perfect. he did. He absolutely does. You're absolutely that. right. He does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that posture, I think you need to check it. Uh, it seems a little haughty. Um, I think religious spiritness is the wickedest. I don't even know if that's a word thing. You know, it was the religious that said to Jesus that he does the works of Beelzebub the works of the devil by the prince of the of the demons you know yeah. um, and it and it's and, also the religious that that you know will straight up tell you you can't talk about that in this church it's a you funny thing it, I mean, um you, you know that's actually that. also when jesus says that there's only one unforgivable sin which is uh the blasphemy of the holy ghost it was right after they accused him of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub. Yeah. It was, you know, when he, when they said that, that's when he said that um, there's only one unforgivable sin. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's debatable what he meant, but. That could very well be it. Uh, man. Like, like Hebrew says, what a fearful thing to haul, fall in the hands of a holy God. If I had anything to say, um, it's it's definitely uh, praise God for his steadfast love. I mean, I was a dead man walking. I deserve nothing of what I've been given. Um, but Jesus obviously died for my sins to impute his righteousness to me while I was a sinner in his or knowledge, being um, omniscient, you know, all knowing. I think that's the one. He he died for me. He knew the moment I would hate him most, and he died for me. And so, like, no one's too far gone. Uh, I guess you could say that there are people who've done many worse things than I have. But uh, you know that doesn't not in matter. the eyes of God, though. No, I know what you're saying. Not in the eyes of God. I was. I was at war with God, open warfare with God, um, you know, and Jesus took my sin on himself uh, oh. because it, it doesn't matter if you think you're a moral individual. You go to church, la, la, la. You've never done drugs. You've never done this. You never drank. You never had sex before marriage. But, oh, I'm so morally good. Oh, I don't need God. I'm, you know, this and that. That's just as bad as a cat killer, you know, whatever you name it, you know, the, the most. Uh, you know, horrific thing you can think of. Our God is holy, though. So that is just what I'd say. It's just it doesn't matter what you've done. You know, there is a the God of gods waiting for you. Um, He picked me up out of my muck in the mire. It doesn't matter what you've done. If you don't know him. uh in the intimate way that he wants to have a relationship with you, um, go to him because he's waiting. He said, those who have heavy laden, the come to me, all the, who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. His yoke is easy. easy. His burden is light. And um, he desires uh, to walk with you in communion that is authentic and and um the greatest love i've ever known yeah amen
So and that's that, in, in closing. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of those things where it's like, um, you may know God, but does God know you? How many of these you people... took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah, how many people went and said, you know, like like Jeremy brought up earlier, you know, you did all these things in my... I did all these things in your name, Lord. And then he yeah. says, depart from me. It's because it's not that you don't know him, but he doesn't truly know you. And the reason why is, is because did you follow his commandments? He says straight up, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's one of those things where it's like this, this, this whole knowing thing needs to be mutual or it's yeah. obsolete. Exactly. And that testified in other scriptures, like they honored me with their lips, but their hearts were far from me. Right. right. And it's Amen. minded that have this haughty eyes. God hates haughty eyes. Um, That, oh, I know God. He's my God. Yeah, I do all this. I do all that. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 so godly. But then he's like, man, it's just the contempt for that posture that God has is is so displayed throughout Jesus's life, you know, and, and, and the rest of scripture. And it's just that is such a dangerous place to be, um, you know, more than more than uh, I think more than anything. Um, yeah. 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 And, you know, our lives I was just going to say one last thing. Um, Even though what you said is true, you know, as long as we have breath in our lungs, there's hope. Um, If the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart, if he's if he's calling you, do not. Let that opportunity pass you by because contrary to popular belief, you cannot come to Christ, get saved, however you want to say it, whenever you want to. You, yeah. I mean, right. the Holy Spirit has to be there calling. Somebody has to be knocking at the door for yep. you to let them in. And it is... Uh, I mean, you don't you don't know if it's going to be the last time, the last opportunity you get before you die. Um, my my cousin just it's, it's been about two months ago. Lived, uh, you know, a stone's throw away from me for the past 20 years and he used to uh, well, he worked nights, but he used to drive to Zaxby's to get something to eat at night and um, one night he was doing that about about two months ago and um, I don't know if he was looking down at his food or, or what he was doing on his way home but I mean the, the interstate where all of these restaurants are is only a few miles from where I live and so I mean he was only a few miles away from home but he didn't make it home um ran off the road there was a a humongous tree that had fallen and it was lay laying on the side of the road and uh, it was way bigger than his little car and hit it going full speed and it broke his neck he died instantly i have no idea if I mean it's sad to say, but and it's not it doesn't reflect well on me as a minister, but I have no idea where he was at with the Lord. I know he went to church every Sunday, you know. Um I think that he was a follower of Christ, but The reason I don't know is because, you know, he was like many others that I know who are in the Southern Baptist Church, the church I I grew up in and the church that I was ordained as a minister in. I, it is sad, but 
the way they give altar calls at the end of, of pretty much every service is almost criminal because you have people that come up and the preacher and all or all the one of the many deacons will say pray after me you know repeat after me and then after they say these words like a spell like magic words they think they're good for the rest of their life no matter what they do and it we end up with a church full of people on their way to hell and you know i, I just i hope josh wasn't one of them but we never know when our last breath is going to be and so don't reject the holy spirit amen amen, amen. good I word into that brother uh so some amazing is there anything else that you would like to say to the audience before you uh before we all get off of here or I mean, not really, just other than the fact, um, well, not the fact, just uh, I, I praise God for the opportunity and just pray that everything that I said was acceptable and pleasing in his sight. And, uh, you know, now's the day of salvation, just kind of how we've been talking. And, uh, yep, I'm nothing special, man. It's just God is who he says he is, and we got to get out of our, we got to get out of his way, excuse me. And that's that's what I'm finding out every day. I gotta get out of his way again. Oh man, I just shoot, I I, I just got in his way. You know? I I, I really man, you know, it's and, and there's grace in that. You know, I'm not beating myself up. It's 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 just the reality, you know. <laughs> Our flesh is weak, man, but the, the the spirit is willing. Um and, and he he's long suffering with us and Yep, can't comprehend his grace. Amen, man. And I know, know, I know exactly what you're saying, bro. It's one of those things where it's like, man, God is so good, and His grace and His mercy surpass anything that I think that we can truly imagine. But we do know that His promises state that His His mercy renews each day, man. And it's like, you eventually, because you don't know when your time is up, like you gotta, you gotta lay down the law bro with yourself yeah. you know what i mean you gotta you gotta die to yourself you gotta follow christ yeah. the way he commands us to follow him or everything that you've done in this life is just vain i mean yeah. imagine yourself going through this life thinking you know christ and christ doesn't know you because you're living a certain way you're doing a certain thing that like you're just ignoring the holy spirit in it you know god's doing his best to try to correct you and straighten you out and all this stuff and you're not following in line with that and then you know one day you hit by a car yep. you know what i'm yeah. saying it's like life is no joke life it's is not. truly no joke but we do know and our hope is the fact that he is merciful and graceful and there's plenty of promises that we can lean on to get us through whatever we might be struggling with and we know that god has sympathy for the things that we're struggling with as well um yeah not that that's an excuse or anything for Know, to keep on doing it but he does know he knows what it's like to be human because he walked yeah and that's why he disciplines those who he loves um and you know he chastens i think chastens those who he loves uh it you know if if if, if you're submitting yourself to him uh you know under him you know he he's gonna sanctify you you know he's gonna complete the work in you that he created uh, that he started in you, you know, that's a promise. And so if you're submitted to him, you're you're um, allowing him to sanctify you and show you where you're wrong. Um, then he's going to do it. He's going to grow your faith and he's going to grow your your understanding of who he is. And by doing that, the key is you will be humbled because pride, pride, pride is our number one downfall and it's behind almost every single sin if you go to the root of every single and you peel back the layers it's always pride porn well guess what pride you think you're owed that pleasure 
Fear. Yeah. Guess what? Interestingly enough, pride. Yeah, you don't think I agree. God is good enough to get you through what you're going through. And somehow oh, it's so strange. You're comfortable in your fear. You know, I've been there. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm sure that it's like and I I know you're a hundred percent right with you know just fear average fear of things or worrying about things and it it may be the case with um like something that i've suffered with most of my life but because of experiences i had as a young child i've i've suffered from severe anxiety and panic attacks um even after coming to christ um it's not yeah. something that happens all the time but i i know when it happens that i can't even tell you what i'm scared of it's just it's a fight or flight response that happens for no reason um, yeah you know the way the doctors describe it to me is my my brain and my body is pumping adrenaline and cortisol at the same time um like like I was in a life or death situation, but I'm not. Um, I don't know if that is. I've been there, bro. Just, I know exactly what you mean. Yep. Yeah. I, don't I didn't know mean if that's a pride thing, it, but though, I uh, just want to make it clear. Uh, you know, I'm not completely generalizing that fear is always pride. Um, I think that in some instances, um, it. It can be. Well, yeah, my, I mean, I wasn't saying it wasn't. I, it would actually, I hope, <laughs> I hope it is because if it's pride, then it's fixable, you know. <laughs> um, I think all fear, all fear is fixable. I mean, obviously, it's extremely difficult. Um, you know, there, you know, the traumas and everything like that, um, you know, can heal over time for sure. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I mean, I don't exactly have an answer. I'm not gonna say I do. It's just I know God is always with us, and um, so He's our comforter. And you know, we do go through fears and tribulations in this life. You know, I'm not gonna pretend I have the answer to everything, and I'm wrong about stuff sometimes too. So, but um, yeah, He's always with us, man, and um. You know, when when I fear, I'm going to call on his name and, you know, he delivers me from all my fears. And so I'm, I'm, I'm proclaiming that for you, brother, um, that, you know, he'll do that for you. And um, but it, but it's hard and, you know, we go through stuff and um, thank the Lord. I, you know, I only it, it, it happens out of the blue and it's. Yeah. You know, just every once in a while used to yeah. be every every day you know, years ago but thank god you know now it may happen a few times a year yeah but i still don't know why you know just come out of the blue hmm yeah i don't know man um some things it's like kind of hard to diagnose oh absolutely yeah without obviously understanding you know all the background but even other things it's like sometimes it's hard to know if is this the enemy or is this physically a physiological thing um you know like sometimes certain uh, mineral deficiencies can even cause panic attacks uh you know it's just like there's a lot but you know we just gotta navigate it through through the word and sometimes it's hard not to over spiritualize something then but then sometimes you're like well maybe i under spiritualize that and now i see that there is a power at work uh yep. against me in my life and so yeah man we i mean this is a battlefield and you know the corruption of the flesh doesn't help um you know and so yeah it's tough man but we got the god of all comfort i mean in the, in, in in the moment though even though we know you know all these truths Sometimes it, it it's really difficult to tangibly feel and understand in the moment that it's true, even though you intellectually know it. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, man, um, it's like one of those. It's one of those things where it's like. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. Go on. No, that's it. That's all I was gonna say. I was gonna say it's just like the Bible, dude. Like it doesn't matter how well you intellectually know it, but are you walking it? Yeah. Are you living it? You know, and that's that's a struggle for everybody, and I understand that. You know, and that's again, it goes back to God's grace and His mercy, and uh, His goodness, man. His goodness leads us to repentance, and sometimes it does take Him to open your eyes, um, for you to realize that oh, this isn't just some sort of physical condition. This might be a spiritual one, so you can do something about it, because God yeah. gave you the power to do something about it. You know, Absolutely. and that's tough. I I struggle, dude. When I hit twenty one for the first time in my entire life and this is a whole nother testimony another you know podcast but when i hit 21 bro i came down with um a severe and i mean severe form of ocd it's called a subtype of ocd so it wasn't just like washing your hands or blah 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 like that that's not what i was dealing with i was dealing with something else with the same exact uh symptoms and um power behind it you know i could tell right away that it was spiritual but at the same time, dude, I went for six or five years, five years struggling with it every single day and severe anxiety, wow. severe depression, um, compulsions and intrusive thoughts every single day of my my freaking life, dude. But hmm. God delivered me and it took five years. And the reason why he delivered me is because and I want everybody to hear this. I want everybody to know this. And I will tell my full story sometime. But listen, when you are struggling with something like that. You have to tell yourself, okay, it's time to pull up my bootstraps and and follow God no matter what. Whether he delivers me or not, it's time to follow him. I have Absolutely. to do this because you know him. And to know him and then turn your back on him is worse than you ever know him in the first place. Right? So I know like people struggle with things and sometimes they go to alcohol or they go to smoking or something like that, you know, to... to kind of ease the pain and, and try to get through it, blah, blah, blah. Well, those things turn into things that are sinful and against God, you know? And, and like, for, for me personally, dude, I became a mini alcoholic for five years. I literally became an alcoholic for five years to try to curb myself and to help myself through what I was dealing with in my life. And I was begging God every day of my life with tears in my eyes, dude, to deliver me every day. And I couldn't, ex could not for the life of me understand why he wouldn't deliver me. But then I told myself, you know what, whether you deliver me or not, I need to follow you because I know you and I'm not trying to go to hell, man. I know who Absolutely. you are. I can never turn my back on you. And praise him regardless. And I praise him regardless. And, and from that moment on that I said that to myself, dude, I, I started just being very strict on my obedience with God. And within three months, he completely delivered me of something that 99% of people who struggle with never get over. And you know, yeah, really? we don't always know why we're struggling with things. It's not always because of sin or it, yeah, um, it's multiple, multiple reasons. Very various variables is what I say. Absolutely. I mean, God could be allowing us to go through something to strengthen us, to refine us through fire, to enable us to help somebody else down the road. Right. Yeah. The more experience, the was, more you can relate. I was going to say that same thing. Yeah, that, you know, maybe he allowed you to go through that for a particular reason. I mean, take a look at Job, you know. He allowed yep. uh, the enemy to to do things. Um, obviously, everything went through the Father. Um, but it's, man, yeah. I mean, life is hard. I mean, we... I think a lot of people try to act like absolutely perfect and like, if, you know what I'm saying? Like put on like a Chris, Christianese kind of personality. And, but you know, like, dude, I mean, it's just raw and simple. Sometimes it just really sucks. Yeah. And it's like, that's okay. Like, that's all right. You know? Um, and you know, Jeremy, I wasn't diminishing um, your fears or anything earlier. Oh, oh, I didn't right. think you were. I didn't think you were at all. Right. And, you know, I don't want you or anyone else to think that it's something that I am dealing with constantly. It's something that I've dealt with my entire life. Um, but yeah. it's something that I'm not going to say the Lord has delivered me 
completely from because I do still have panic attacks. But yeah. compared to the way my life used to be, the only time that I didn't have panic attacks was the years that I was completely in sin and didn't care if I lived or died and was on an extreme amount of drugs every day. Um, yeah. So okay. those things were repressed. And yeah. Who knows how long it takes for those repressed motions to work themselves out. You know, I, I don't. But I do know that the Lord has delivered me from it for the most part. I can yeah. remember when I was very young, maybe 12 or 13, my anxiety at that time uh, was like around the end times and the rapture. I was, I was raised in the Southern Baptist Dispensation Church preacher of rapture and mm -hmm. I was constant and I mean every single day almost the entire day scared to death that the rapture had happened and I had been left behind I would there weren't cell phones yet oh man but we had a house phone and I would call everybody that I either who was a Christian or had a good idea was a Christian, grandparents, all kind of people, and just make up the most ridiculous reasons for why I was calling. And I, I was calling to make sure that I hadn't been left behind. And yeah. that's just one of the things I can remember when I was a kid. But yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Um, it's always been. I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're. I was just saying it's just something that's always been there until, uh, I guess, around 2017, 28. That anxiety. Yeah. And then the Lord delivered you from it, but it's something that like comes around every once in a while. Would you say that that is accurate? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. it, it'll happen every once in a while. You know, sometimes I'll go a, a year or six months without having it happen at all. And yeah. then, you know, out of the blue, it'll happen. But like I said, when it happens, I couldn't tell you what I'm scared of. It's like being, it's the fear itself. It, there's, mm -hmm. there's not, there used to be things that fear was focused on. Like I said, the, the rapture was the earliest thing I can remember. Then yeah. For many, many years, especially when I uh, got around the age of 25, which is how old my dad was when he died. Like, I was scared I was going to have a heart attack. So that's what my anxiety mm. attacks revolved around. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have one, they aren't revolved around being scared of dying or <laughs> being left behind or anything like that. It's just um, like a fight or flight response that I don't know where it comes from. And, you know, mm. Dude. I'll, if I start praying, it goes away, but. It well, Jeremy, I, I, dude, I got to talk to you sometime, like, personally about that subject. Um, okay. it, well, I just, you know, real quickly, and I know this is, you know, we got to go here, but, dude, my dad, he died when I was eight, but he was 35 years old and he died. Uh, well, he died of multiple things. One of them was a heart attack, which was caused by taking, like, sleeping pills while he was drinking because he was an alcoholic. And at the same time, <laughs> uh, he had a blood clot. So it's like, 
I was told a couple different things, but dude, one thing that I do worry about sometimes because of the amount of stress I seem to be under all day, every day, I I worry about the same thing sometimes, dude, intrusively. I'll start worrying about uh, having a heart attack when I'm young. My dad died at 35 and I'm 30. I'm, I'm about to be 31. You know, I think I'm coming that's that natural. Time, so. but yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, of course, especially when it's traumatizing. Yeah. yeah. One thing we have now that I definitely didn't have at 25 is the blessed hope. I mean, amen. I'm not afraid to die at all. I don't want to, you know, my children, except for my youngest, are grown. I don't want to leave any of them. I don't want to leave my granddaughter. But if it happens, you know, I'm ready to meet my maker as far as you know, my relationship with Christ. But yeah. uh, you know, at the same time, as someone who lost their father at a young age, I don't want to leave my 11-year-old without dad. Uh, so I yeah. definitely it, probably uh, still subconsciously deal with it. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard to pinpoint sometimes when fears are like... Um, when they're like irrational like why am i scared but i'm scared but then sometimes you know things come from like traumas like you guys are saying too yeah like i think some of it like maybe is a natural response but then i think also that the enemy uses um those things and um issues we've had in the past and in our families and stuff like that yeah i'd uh, say definitely really smart you know i mean they're crafty and so it's like the the fear thing it's like they know that works like they they kind of stick to it uh and i i I see that in certain individuals that i know Uh, but other than that it's like for me it's been very supernatural um just kind of random like you know sleep paralysis type stuff and you know different things like you know you kind of know when there's a spirit around like you don't actually kind of know when when it's a fear thing like that you you feel shrouded uh until you pray and then it's gone but the it's, the trauma stuff is is sometimes it seems like it's e- even worse i agree you get, and, you get yeah, I totally get what you're saying, dude. And, that, and another thing that I used to struggle with hardcore is uh, is sleep paralysis. You know, Jeremy knows this, but yeah, I struggled for um, a decade from the time I was like nine years old, eight or nine years old, to the time I was 19 when I got saved. I struggled with sleep paralysis five to, out of seven days a week. So I know what it's like. And even before I was saved, I could tell like this was something spiritual. I just didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know what to do. It's so interesting. Um, Yeah, like that you said you've had paranormal experiences as a child. I I remember, and I forgot to mention this, you know, at the beginning part of my testimony. But uh, yeah, I I remember getting things thrown at me at night in the room. And then I would just like pass out. Uh, You know, sleep paralysis, waking up, not being able to move. And of course, you know, the one time you know that was actually just a, a a demon literally standing before me and that was my that was my fall at that time when i was into the that porn stuff but um ever i i can't really pinpoint why other than the fact that you know i was watching porn at such a young age and i allowed those demons into my life um you know made covenants with them and everything by my actions um but now if it happens, I'm like, okay, this is just definitely spiritual warfare. And I know how to deal with it now. You know, yeah. I, it, you know, like Russ, Russ Dizdar has been great. Uh, Amen. If you know about Russ, I'm sh- I don't even have to ask that question. I know you guys know about <laughs> Russ, but <laughs> yeah, man, he, he's been a great he's source. Definitely missed. 
Yeah, man. Yes. Yeah. I know there's, there's, um, I don't know how many episodes it is back, but I know it, it's on, um, Jeremy and jo- it's on the Buy Their Fruits podcast and it's on my YouTube channel. But it's uh, a few episodes back because it uh, showed that it was actually supposed to be an end times episode, but it, it ended up being, uh, an episode where we all talked about spiritual encounters that we had had in our lives. And, um, it, it's really good. I think you should give it a listen when you get a chance. Um, yeah, if you could send it to me, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. I'll send it to you right after this. Uh, just a quick side note. Um, whenever I saw that entity, that I basically summoned, no one believed me. Oh, and they were all, like, they were like, demons aren't real. And I was like, I I just saw one. Like, I wasn't high. Really? You know, I didn't even do any psychedelics at that time. Like, I had never done hallucinogenics yet. So it's like, no, I saw that thing, and it's because I did that, and then I prayed. I even prayed. I forgot to mention this. Um, but I was like, God, take this away. And then I passed out. That's all I remember. Like, I looked at my clock. I looked over to my left. There was this being standing under my fan. Um, you know, I don't know how fruitful it is to describe how it looks, to be honest. Wait, was it a um, ceiling fan? Or like yeah, a regular? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know how relevant that is, but it, it's just what I remember. I was um, thinking, like, uh, was it like a Nephilim, a Nephilim or a little people? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, it was like it was, it was like just a, like a woman kind of thing. But it, it to be, it was it's weird. I don't understand how all that works. I thought it was going to be this like seductive thing. You know, mm-hmm. it was terrifying. But the, dude, don't uh, feel bad because I just had a guy on Justin Odie Odie Brown, dude. And I don't know if you heard that episode, but he had a personal encounter with Lilith. And yeah, with Lilith. Dude. Yeah. Okay. And no, I don't care what... know who Lilith was. <laughs> I really don't. I, I don't care to know what it was, but I think he was a succubus. Uh, yep. yep. Yeah, he said he encountered Lilith. That's that. I mean, I don't know if that's a fallen angel or a demon, but that's that's pretty crazy. Well, I mean, there's 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 scriptural precedence for it. Um, you know, Lilith isn't mentioned like by name in scripture. Oh, uh, she she um, is in the uh, Septuagint in Isaiah. Um... Yeah, well, that's what I was about to say. Um, oh, okay. you know, it, it says uh, night hag, screech owl, depending on oh, the that. the translation you're looking at. But in the Septuagint, which is the Bible Jesus used, the apostles, the early church used up mm-hmm. until you know the fifth century when Jerome made the Latin Vulgate, the Septuagint was the Old Testament, and it is the oldest uh, translation of the Old Testament in existence. Yeah. And uh, like Jeremy said, yeah, it, it does use that name. Now, I do not believe at all that it is referring to Adam's first wife or no. the legend. Oh, no. Like but, yeah, <laughs> but there are these these demonic entities, um, you know, succubus, incubus, um, these spirits of the the dead Nephilim that have been here. I mean, they are smarter than us because they've been here for thousands of years. Yeah, and they they don't just know all of the things we've done. They know yeah. all of the things that our ancestors have done. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's why we have to have the Holy Spirit and the whole armor of God to be able to 
engage in spiritual warfare because if we were to try on you know our own merit with our flesh it would be like the account in acts you know where um the sons of Sceva try to cast the demons out and they get basically torn to pieces you know not literally but beat up bad yeah and so i mean these things have the ability to hurt people physically but mm-hmm. that's why we need the holy spirit the whole armor of god which is a lifestyle the things in ephesians 6 they aren't something that you prey on like many preachers preach myself included at one point you know you don't pray the the helmet of salvation on or the shield of faith have the shield of faith by walking in faith you have the helmet of salvation you you know have salvation when you are a citizen of the kingdom and a child of the king have the the different articles of the armor and you are basically living the lifestyle of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, Ephesians chapter six is almost identical Paul's way of describing the lifestyle Jesus described Matthew 5 through 7. We're going to have to go back and read that with that in mind. I love learning, you know, like some stuff that like Dr. Michael Heiser talks about, about how Jesus, you know, everything he did was a direct affront to the powers of darkness um you know in so many different ways and it's just it's so cool to me to see um you know the strategy the 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 um all-knowing strategy of god you know putting the enemy to to open shame at the cross you know they wouldn't have crucified the lord of glory if they, if they would have known what was going to happen but it was it's as heavenly operational security as <laughs> as Mr. Walden says, you know. It's like goodness gracious, like our God is so much more powerful than they are, like they don't even stand a chance. So it's like we have to keep remembering that. As formidable as they are and they seem they have no chance against the God who created them. You know, and obviously the Nephilim, you know, we, that's a whole nother tangent, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, but I know you wanted to wrap it up, man. Um, I know yeah, I closed it a while too. ago, but we've just, we've been having a good time. Dude, I love it. It's, uh, it's this natural flowing conversation, man. And it's being real. So I mm-hmm. appreciate you coming on, bro, being the first one on uh, Testimony Tuesday, which is pretty cool. And, uh, God bless you, man. Thank you for everything, and and your your testimony itself is inspiring, man. Especially when you think Amen. about all the ways that God was kind of like inserted into your situations, even though you probably couldn't have seen seen it then. But when you get saved, I don't know about you, but at least for me, like I uh, when I got saved, dude, I just had this immediate flashback of every point in my life where God was there for me when I didn't know it and when I hated Amen. it. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, I've had pretty inspiring. That. Um, I, I can't wait to ask him when I see him face to face, you know, to show me, you know, his sovereignty in my life throughout the years. And maybe he'll show me. But, yeah, it's been an honor to be here, um, you know, especially being the first. You know, I'm, I'm very honored and just praise God for the opportunity to magnify his name. So, hey, man, dude. And if you have any other experiences in your life that come up or that you remember or that you end up going through, feel free, you know, to hit me up, dude. I'm not trying to make entertainment here but like if you want a place to talk about it this is a safe place and that safe place is called by their fruits we appreciate you coming on jeremy anderson do you have any last words brother 
Um, only that uh, I appreciate you allowing me to co-host with you, and uh, I am definitely not John, and John is best, but I enjoyed it I as always. You. Perfect replacement. I love you guys too. Um, but. I will make a shameless plug really quick. Um, Go for it. Come to our YouTube channel at any time um, on the Kingdom Productions Network. Just how it sounds. It's spelled just how it sounds on YouTube. Just type it in the search engine. And we've got uh, almost 200 videos now. All right, thank you, man. Um, uh, Mason, do you have anything that you want to say before we we dip out of here? Is there any if if you like want well, people to uh, communicate with you somehow? Do you have an email or uh, do you have your own podcast? What's up with you, man? You, I don't have anything like that. My ministry is my family and uh, preaching the gospel to every creature, man. Amen. Um, Amen. And I'm not diminishing. Yeah. I'm just saying that's what God's called me to. So, um, yeah. Uh, Man, if someone wants to reach out, um, they can look me up on Facebook. Um, or, you know, they can reach out to you and get my email. Just uh, either way. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for coming on, Mason. Jeremy, thank you, thank you for coming on and being my co-host again for like a thousand times. <laughs> dude, I, I swear you're the perfect replacement. Whether I'm out or John's out, dude, you're always there. So I appreciate you, man. Um, but, yeah, I love you guys. <laughs> Uh, reach out uh, to buy their fruits. You can contact Jeremy Stone or John Brisson on Facebook. Um, just give us a message in Messenger, or you can. I, I never check it, but if you want to email um, buy their fruits podcast, you can reach us at buy their fruits podcast at yahoo.com. Um, can't promise to get back to you because I never check it. Just saying. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming on again, and I uh, love you, and we'll, we'll see you on another show, I'm sure. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. God bless you. Grace and peace. All right. Grace and peace. Bye-bye.